Hello everyone! You know what I like doing? Starting new farms. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've just started a brand new character, put him on random, the result is immaculate. So obviously the first thing we do, get the parsnips. Are we going to plant them? I don't know yet. I'm going to give that some thought. I've always really liked starting new farms, I'm not sure why. Maybe just because you have so many things to do and so many options. Doing the same stuff at the end of the game kind of gets repetitive. You're just planting big crops, harvesting them, finding truffles from pigs, skull cavern, the usual. Starting new farms has always just been a lot of fun for me. One of the first things I always do, try not to waste too much energy right away because you need it. First thing I'm going to do, chop 50 wood because you need to make a chest right away. And I've said this a million times before, but I'll say it again. The most efficient way to chop wood is to chop the tops off trees. You get the most wood per swing value. And especially in your first few days, you have limited time and energy, but you're certainly more limited in energy than you are in time. It doesn't take long to get 50 wood. Just keep chopping the tops off trees. You can do this while you wait for Pierre's to open. He opens at 9, make a chest, uh, hopefully by then. I might not actually be able to do it quite that fast, but it doesn't really matter. You don't have that many different things you even can do on the first day. And I'm always thinking about it as I'm playing, what's the best way to start a new farm? Trying to come up with all sorts of different strategies and ideas. There's lots of exploits and things you can do to cheat it, but it is fun to do it legitimately. Like right now, I could go make millions of gold by summoning items or go walk out into the ocean and catch only big fish. All sorts of cool stuff, but for now, I'm going to keep it legit. So there's my one chest, put it out of the way right there, put all the tools we don't need in there. The parsnips are coming with me and everything else except for maybe that is going to come with me. Another reason I like that chest, store things in it. I always recommend not selling anything you find unless they have absolutely no use and you're very sure of that, but I doubt that's ever really going to be the case. For example, these daffodils. I could sell them, but I could also keep them because they're good for the community center bundle down the road. They're good as gifts for a few people. Everything has a use, so you want to make sure you hold on to at least a few of everything. I always recommend, like I said, holding on to everything unless you really need money. But let's go see Pierre. In this case, I'm not going to keep the daffodils because I'm pretty confident there's going to be lots more out there in the big old world because they're everywhere. There's an extra 90 gold. Another thing I like to do right at the beginning, sell the parsnips. You get 150 gold for those. I know you're supposed to plant them, they only take 4 days to grow, and you probably are better off planting them, but I just like doing the cauliflower. I feel like you get better- I just like the fact that you get more money out of them, and you have fewer of them to do, so you get more money for less effort. But there's other factors involved with the parsnips, your farming skill goes up sooner so you can get a scarecrow involved a lot sooner. And with parsnips you can keep re-rolling your money and getting bigger crops really fast. They only take 4 days, so water, 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 and profit. It's that easy. By then you can keep buying more and get a whole bunch of parsnips going. The best way to do that really is to do parsnips until you can afford better crops. That scarecrow is pretty important because I'm likely to lose some of my cauliflower to the crows. Uh, I'll go to the beach right away actually. I always tend to forget that's there. Always check all the garbage cans on the first day. Sometimes you can find really good stuff. Sometimes you find rare gems, but the beach also has valuable stuff. And hoe up all the worms you find. Maybe we'll find an ancient seed. Every once in a while you actually do on the first day. But at the very least, check the beach. You will be rewarded with all this good stuff. There's always a few things around on the first day. You probably want to go ahead and scour the whole map looking for forageables because they're really good energy and if you really have to, they're worth it for money. I always hope to get lucky in the garbage cans. It's not that uncommon to find gems in them either, so not a big deal. There's a broken CD. Not really useful, we'll just loop all the way up here to the north and around past the carpenter shop and then head back towards the farm. Gotta plant all these things. And I can never remember forgeable goods come up here. I don't think they do. But we're gonna walk this way anyway just to see it. A lot of mods incorporate this big space over here. It's kinda neat. It feels like a big wasted space up there. Maybe when I update the game again they'll incorporate that somehow. Another daffodil. Already my backpack is full. Another reason you want to have your chest so you can store all the stuff in there and you don't get overloaded. 12 spaces sounds like a lot, but you'll actually go through that fairly quickly. I haven't even visited the spring onions yet. One thing I might change about the game is you might be able to get the fishing rod on the first day because you tend to run out of things to do and then you just basically go to bed because, well, there's just nothing more to do. So I'm going to take all the stuff and actually just sell it because I want the money because I'm greedy. I know where to find everything myself because I've played this game a billion million times. 
and we'll get the money for that tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to plant the cauliflower real quick. Only nine of them to go, so that's easy. That's pretty much the main reason I do get cauliflower in the end, is because I hate watering things so much. If I only have nine to do, that's easy. Barely any effort required. Even then, I'll avoid watering these as much as I can and get sprinklers or the upgraded watering can sooner than later because this is old. Alright, now we are going to go to the spring onions all the way down to the south. This is the other reason I always bring my scythe with me. For one thing, you can swing it. It's free energy. It doesn't cost anything. But you want to keep the path down here fairly clear. You spend a lot of time running up and down. And maybe your pick too. The rocks tend to swarm this corner. Just make a pretty big path because stuff tends to multiply off other stuff. So the bigger the path, the longer it's going to take to fill back in again. Two spaces is good enough for now. I want those spring onions. And there is, of course, the good old spring onion trick. If you want to see that, uh, there's a video on my channel. I'm sure there's a few other videos out there on YouTube by now, but that's a cool one that's not super cheaty, but it does make a difference. Oh, here's Haley the vampire. She's still here. Haley's too involved with her camera to notice you. Yeah, I know. She's too good for me. We've been through this before. Spring onions. Definitely don't sell these. They are just no good. I actually got a gold quality one already. I could do the spring onion trick. I'll do it right now, just so you guys... Actually, I can't because they have other ones. Never mind. But these are actually worth very little money. They're not great energy, but they're definitely worth more as energy than they are as money. Plus, Linus really likes them, so if you feel like feeding that little guy, go ahead and do so. I'm um, going to keep the seeds and pick that guy. First horseradish. And already I'm going to have to go back and put all this stuff in my chest before I do any more foraging because I'm full again. It happens that fast. I see we're stuck with another bad choice. I don't know why I'm getting so many good quality items today. There's no reason I should be. But we're going to sacrifice the wood. If you have something really valuable, I think you can throw it on the ground and it will hang out there for a while. I'm not sure how it does in between loading screens, but throw it on the ground and go put your stuff into your chest and then come back and grab it again. Vampire Haley's on the move. Does she want to talk to me now? Hi, dummy. Oh, you're that new farmer boy, aren't you? Yes. Oh, I'm Haley. I need to go. Okay, she's too busy for me. I'm too busy for her. It's good to have an efficient first day. It's already five o'clock. Almost the evening already. I've got pretty much everything done that I wanted to do. Just a few more things. Wow, he looks so classy. He's got like a mullet and everything. This is what I should change Mumps to. It'd be a good new look for him. He needs an update. Maybe I'll throw that in a live stream or something. Someone can pick what Mumps gets to look like from here on out. Um, I'm actually going to plant those seeds. Everything else going in. I don't really need to carry some of these things around with me anymore. Definitely not the hoe. Actually, the hoe I do need. Never mind. Always carry the hoe around. We already went through this. Mixed seeds. And also watering can. And back down to forage the rest of the woods. And if you have the different farm types, obviously you could do a little bit more with those. Wherever lands you can't do any fishing. Wilderness, you could maybe fight some things with your scythe if they even show up on the first day. I'm not sure. Mining farm, whatever. Go break rocks. Why not? And the other farm with the foraging farm forest farm i can't remember what it's called go forage stuff along the edge of your field why not dandelion's a good find on the first day there should be lots of forageables every day a few things can reappear and the big reset is on sunday i'm gonna go all the way down to the cat house and then all the way back up around to the carpenter shop hopefully to find something of use this is kind of what I mean right now. At the end of the day, you kind of run out of things to do. Usually I end up running out of energy and forgeables. So I just chop wood until I'm out of energy. And then I cut grass and weeds until I'm out of time. And that's probably what I'll do. Almost missed this little guy. We don't want to forget about that one. Or I suppose if you're a normal player, you could also go and meet the townsfolk and start giving them gifts and stuff. But that's not really my style. I wait for them to all gather at the saloon on Friday or Saturday where most of them are, and you can just give them all gifts right there. And that's easy, because if you don't know what to get someone, buy them a beer. It is expensive, but they will love it, especially Pam. It's the only way to stop her from devouring you. All that stuff in there, and we'll go do the loop, and then we'll come back and clear out some of this mess. So many things to do at the beginning. So much fun. I forgot my scythe. That's okay, we can chop stuff out of the way. The axe works just as good, it just takes a lot more energy. I'd wager there's been a lot of people playing their first day lately. Since this came to the Switch, there was a lot of new people that finally got into the market. Lot of hours played. 
Always put Linus's fire out on the first day. That is key to everything. He doesn't need a fire. And Sebastian's out. I would give him a gift, but I don't have anything. And I don't like him. Oh, you just moved in, right? Cool. Out of the places you could live, you chose Pelican Town? Yeah, I wanted to be cool like you. Standing there, smoking beside the lake. And gazing off into nothing. Being all vampire -y and stuff. And I just remembered one more spot I have to forage. And also this guy. Right beside the bus. I always forget that spot's there and sometimes it has a lot of good forageables. Always check there. And it's right beside your house, so... It's kind of a shame how often it's overlooked. You get so much energy and good stuff from that little area. Can't believe it's 9 o'clock already. The first day is so busy. It just flies by. Hopefully there's something here or I'm gonna look like an idiot. Well, there usually is quite a bit of stuff here. Sometimes it's tucked behind the fence and you can't get to it, which is annoying, but stuff does go here at the bus stop. Also, if you wander in here, you'll notice there's a little lockbox. Once you get a battery, put a battery in there and you'll start the whole quest line to go to the casino. Which isn't huge, but that's where you get the Statue of Endless Fortune. You get to see some shady guy in a casino. He has a bouncer, all sorts of good stuff. And it's just kind of a fun quest chain, but you might want to look up the details before you start it because you need things from multiple seasons, so you definitely want to hold on to those. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait a year and a half to do it. Now, I still have some energy, so I can cut down a few trees. Once I'm out of energy, if I still have time, I'm going to clear some weeds and grass. Wood is fairly important early on because you can fix the bridge over to the other side of the beach. And there's definitely some fairly valuable stuff over there. I think people do overrate it. Everyone says it's one of the first things you do, like you have to do it, but... It's good, but it's not really super necessary. I wouldn't prioritize it above your other stuff. Do like I'm doing now. Chop some wood at the end of the day. Maybe you get 20, 30, 50, maybe a couple hundred a day if you're really good. Then it's a couple days away. No rush. And I'm getting exhausted. If I'm quick, I can get a few more things done. You don't want to stay out past one because that's your first energy penalty and you pass out entirely at two. Unless you want to cheat and use the journal trick, feel free to do so if you'd like to. I do it on occasion, but I don't like to do it very often because you actually move very slow if you're doing it. You got to open your journal, then you just walk 10 steps, and then you got to do it again. 10 steps, pause, 10 steps, pause. Okay, I'm going to go to bed now or I'm going to run out of time. 12.50, opening this chest. I might have actually made a mistake. I got to get into bed right now. Okay, I made it. How much money do we make? Foraging leveled up. That's because of everything I picked up. Field snacks are actually really useful. Make those down the road. Chop down trees, it's another good reason to do so. 300 gold for the first day. Definitely had better, but I'm not going to complain. Alright, well, that was fun. I just felt like playing the first day again because I just really like doing it and it's been a long time since I've really done it. So that was that. If you haven't seen it already, I'm doing a giveaway on one of my prior Stardew Valley videos. I can't think of which one offhand because I'm really tired, but if you want in on that, go take a look. It's a $50 Steam card. All you got to do is leave a comment to enter. Go find it, whatever video that is. The winner will be announced the same day this video is uploaded, so make it quick. Other than that, if you haven't seen my channel before, go check it out. Lots of other videos in there, all sorts of good ones, all sorts of bad ones. Hundreds of them. New videos out every day. Gonna try and do two a day for the foreseeable future. Lots of Stardew Valley and all sorts of other games. So any suggestions, do let me know. Other than that, I hope you like this one. Thank you all for watching.